Hello everybody, welcome to another Archetype video. Today we're going to be talking about the Rogue Archetype Succeed by X. What's X? X is a variable. Sometimes it's one, mostly it's two, sometimes it's three, and then I guess also sometimes it's four. But Rogue just don't care, they just want to succeed by a positive number. Uh, the it, goal for this Archetype is pretty simple. Succeed by that number. Uh, is there any other way of saying it? Am I missing some sort of elegance uh, here? So basic, basically, it just means that you, you want to succeed by more than the test demands. Mm -hmm. uh, often this means over committing to the skill or, you know, playing cards that make you better. Heck yeah. Than you need to be, but you get additional payoff for it. Uh, yeah, there's like a neat balance there where you need to commit more resources than you want to succeed a test, but you don't want to commit so many resources that it leaves you lacking after whatever payout you get for succeeding by that amount. Definitely. Uh, well, why don't we start talking about some of these cards because there are a lot in this archetype. This is kind of like Green's strength is archetypes. They're <clears throat> probably, apart from Mystic, I just think they're one of the best archetype classes. They work really well when they're built around their archetype. So Yeah, to be honest, I think this is also like probably just the most solid rogue archetype based on how many cards there are for it yeah yeah but all right uh travis why don't you take these first ones okay um so the first two here we have opportunist level zero and level two uh level zero um provides you with one symbol and if you succeed by three or more you return it to your hand after this test instead of discarding it and then the level two version again commits only one symbol, but if you succeed by two or more, two or more, you get to return it to your hand instead of discarding it. Um, this is actually a particularly strong card for this archetype because lots of cards demand that you succeed by two to get their beneficial effect, uh, including the opportunist level two. And quite conveniently, if you commit two opportunists to the same test, then that gives you plus two. So you're basically just succeeding the test. Mm -hmm. and your opportunists are just like there to proc all your extra effects. I would actually describe the opportunist as like the workhorse of the deck in a lot of cases. Um, and the difference between succeeding by three or more or two or more is quite big. Um, I, w I would say that upgrading your opportunist is a um, priority upgrade. It mm -hmm. is a very large uh, difference between those two. The single number. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it really is. Uh, our next card here, we got uh, Daring Maneuver. This one is like the other easy, obvious setup for it, where you play it when you succeed a skill test. You get plus two value for that skill test, or the level two version, um, which comes in the Winifred deck. Again, you play it when you succeed a skill test. You get plus three to that test, and you draw a card as well. Um, it's just kind of nice to have, and I wouldn't play these as a complement to another if you're playing cards from this archetype as a complement to another archetype. But if you're in deep on this archetype, it's a nice, easy um, enabler mm -hmm. where it just, it just gets you the skill value you need. Uh, contrary to what I said about opportunities being a priority upgrade, I would say that this upgrade is very much a quality of life one where it's just, you're never going to rush it, but you know, you're like... Scenario six, scenario seven, you just finished, and you got a couple of XP floating around, you're not going to feel bad about upgrading your deck. Yeah. Uh, on the note with Tra what Travis was saying, too, uh, unlike the ceiling archetype in our last archetype video where it was like Forgotten Age, um, the Succeed by Two is kind of like ubiquitous throughout the entirety of the cycle release. However, there is a great package of it in the Investigator decks, as you'll see with as we go deeper into this list. Um, the way for a deck specifically. The other ones don't really do that. So yes, good. yeah. Um, Brian, why don't you got these guys? All right. So we've got Momentum. This one is, if this skill test is successful, reduce the difficulty of the next skill test you perform by X, where X is the amount this skill test succeeded by to a maximum of three. So this card helps you to hedge against overcommitting by allowing you to commit heavily to one skill test, but also effectively commit heavily to your next skill test this turn. I think this card is pretty reducing sweet. Difficulty. It's pretty solid. Uh, it's also very roller. cheap experience-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just getting to spend one on it is is pretty good. Uh, 
high roller we can just use to get plus two, which is conveniently the number that most of our succeed by tests will ask us to succeed by. Uh, it costs some money, and it is two XP. Uh, but we can just do it once every turn. Yeah, and, and this one's not like a succeed by two card, but it gives you that two you want to succeed yeah. by. So that's where it helps yeah. the archetype there. It's a very nice enabler. Yes. Yeah, it makes it makes the other cards work the way you want them to. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Switchblade level zero. We fight. If we succeed by two or more, the attack deals plus one damage. You might be thinking, that's bad. You'd be right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, like... It's very difficult to get up to that plus two on most rogue characters mm -hmm. without getting an inherent bonus from your from your weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it could still be done. Uh, we got the upgraded switchblade, which is much better. Mm -hmm. The difference is that it gives us the plus two punch that we need to succeed by to deal the extra damage. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just like we are fighting and we're dealing an extra damage unless we fail spectacularly. Yeah. Uh, um, mm -hmm. no, I, I as I was making this list, I it kind of blows my mind. It's so Switchblade is in the Dunwich Legacy cycle. I think it's the upgraded one should have been in the core set instead of Leo. Leo could have been pushed back later. I think Absolutely. That's... Yeah, no, if upgraded, upgraded Leo didn't exist, I wouldn't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Another yeah. strong thing about the upgrade Switchblade is that you have to succeed by two more and get the extra damage, and it just gives you plus two. So again, you're just you're looking. Cards that give you plus two to your test and give you a benefit for succeeding by plus two are really like, nice. like They're you know, the, the nectar archetype. or the ambrosia of this archetype, where you just you just have to pass the test and they just give you stuff for free, right? It's delicious. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can talk about lockpick because I don't know Derringer. Bren, why don't you take sure. Derringer? You know more about it. Uh, so Derringer, similarly to the Switchblade, is a weapon that if we succeed by two or more. The attack deals extra damage. This one uses ammo and costs more to put into play. But the level zero version also gives us that plus two that we need to succeed the test by in order to score our extra damage. Uh, the upgraded one does something very similar where we spend an ammo, we fight, we get plus two. If, the, if we succeed by one or more though, which is basically like the weapon is actually giving us a plus one, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the Derringer, which kind of doesn't, kind of. Uh, we deal our extra damage, but additionally, once per turn, if we succeed by three or more, we get to take an extra action this turn, uh, which is kind of huge. Mm -hmm. uh, Lockpicks? Yeah, the three or more is like a little tougher to hit, but an extra action is a big... It's I mean, it's it. well deserved. That's a big yeah. bonus. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lockpicks are a great card, and as we were actually saying... In a, our archetype video that's for releasing tomorrow for these uh, rogue assets, uh, lockpick is kind of like the best consistent way to get the succeed by two for your other cards that care about it because you get to add your foot to your book when you investigate. Uh, for the basic one, you add your foot, and if you did not succeed by at least two, you discard like lockpicks. Uh, the upgraded one that only costs one experience comes in with three supplies, and if you did not succeed by at least two, you remove a supply from lockpicks. So you basically get three strikes, and then they're gone. It's very unlikely that you're going to lose your lockpicks throughout the entire thing unless you're really unlucky or just, I don't know, making horrible decisions somehow. Um, and I think that it's... It's just as as Bryn was saying in our archetype, but uh, in our asset video that's coming out tomorrow, it just it makes it so it's so easy to succeed by two when you're effectively investigating at seven or eight against the game's shroud, which is usually three or four. Burglary, burglary! Oh my God! Specifically, just the level two version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because the uh, level, the inexperienced version does not actually care if you succeed by two or if you succeed by X. So uh, you exhaust burglary and investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, you gain two resources plus one additional resource for each point you succeed by to a maximum of three. So if you can succeed by the, let's say, two, you get four resources out of that, which is a nice way to get money if you do want that. And this also would be beneficial in the big money green archetype because it can effectively get you five resources for a single action if you're in magical christmas land where everything works out that sounds pretty nice and then we got watch this 
This one is my little love child. I love this guy. When you commit it to a test, you spend up to three resources. Then if you succeed by one or more, which is conveniently the resource, the, the symbol it gives you, it gives you one symbol, uh, you gain twice that many resources back. Cheap shot. Does someone want to take these guys? So there's, there's a whole cycle of events like this that we are going to cover probably fairly shortly here. Uh, they cost two to, you cost two to play them, you fight, they don't all fight, but uh, they add your foot value to the skill, skill value for the attack. If you succeed by two or more, you automatically evade the attacked enemy, so you get to score a point and evade them. Uh, the upgraded version is the same card, except that if you succeed by three or more, you get to return the cheap shot to your hand at the end of your turn. That's nice. So you can just use the cheap shot every turn. Yeah. Uh, nice. If you're succeeding by three or more, which again, should not be that hard if you are adding your foot score to another score and then making a test with that score. Yeah, like just like for example, let's look at Finn Edwards with Delilah O'Rourke playing this card. He then attacks for nine against the enemy. That's pretty easy yeah. to succeed by three. Yeah, you don't like you might not even need to commit anything. Yeah, uh, it is worth noting that with these cards that add your foot score to a different value, the test is made with the other score's value, mm -hmm. right? So like you cannot commit foot cards to make this better because you are not making a foot test. Yeah, uh, which is true of the lock picks as well. Uh, slip away. Uh, is uh, evade and you add your book to the skill value for this evasion attempt. If you succeed by two or more and the evaded enemy is not elite, it does not ready during the next upkeep phase. And then there is the uh, upgraded version, the level two, which is now if you succeed by one or more, it does not uh, un it does not ready. And if you succeed by three or more, you get a return slip away to your hand at the end of your turn. So this one's kind of like a like, you're already evading with your foot. It's probably not going to just double your foot, so it uses your book instead. Luckily, most green characters have a pretty good, solid book that this will be, like, basically, at the very least, an unexpected courage to this evade action. Bryn, suggestion. I'll let you take this one. Suggestion is like lockpicks, but for evading. So we get to evade and add our brain value to our skill value to, for this evasion attempt. If we do not succeed by at least two, we remove a charge from suggestion. It has three charges. If we run out, we throw it away. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not so good as adding your foot score, at least if your character is green, your primary green. Your brain score is probably not so big. Mm -hmm. But still, you're adding two numbers together, one of which is probably very high. Uh, all you have to do is pass by two or more. But even if you don't pass by two or more, you still pass the test. Mm -hmm. and get to evade. Yeah. Uh, suggestion level two is very similar. We get the same add your, add your brain to the foot score. If you do not succeed by two, remove a charge. And as a reaction effect, when a non-elite enemy would, would attack us, you can spend one of the charges to cancel the attack. See ya. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of just get to, get to pretend they're not there for now. Sick. All right. You know, these seem like a lot of Bryn cards. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason Bryn's doing all the talking in this yeah, episode. Yeah, Bryn, I'm going to pass the ball to you again, because right. I, I couldn't. All right. So, we've got the 45 Tomps at the green upgrade. Uh, we got five ammo. We can spend an ammo to fight and get plus two punch and deal an extra damage for the attack. If we succeed by at least X, we may spend one extra ammo to deal this attack's damage to another enemy at your location where x is that enemy's fight value so in this case we're trying to pass by like you know maybe we've got a cultist or a wizard or something mm -hmm. at our location but we're also fighting another big guy we're trying to pass by the amount that it that we need to to not have to spend an action shooting the other guy i think the flavor uh, on that card's pretty cool it feels like you're actually yeah, it's, gunning it's pretty people on down. point yeah uh we got pilfer specifically the upgraded one we investigate the investigation uses our foot instead of our book if we succeed we discover two additional clues of the location and if we succeed by two or more we return pilfer to our hand at the end of the turn this is a common theme among green events where you get to return them if you succeed by enough mm -hmm. it's now uh, a common theme it didn't used to be 
Oh, yeah. I think I the try not to look at that. This actually come from the Winifred Investigator deck and later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try not to look at green cards past because it's not fun. <laughs> uh, when a new mechanic comes in the green, like Bryn's like, it's always been this way. We've always been like this, I'm pretty sure. Bryn's sitting there looking at Tony's yeah. five fight. He's like, yeah, no, this is how it's, it's always been. This, this it's way. always been this like this. this. Yeah. <laughs> Walking yeah. over the days of Jenny struggling to pass an <laughs> investigation test. Like, why do I only have three? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a sawn off shotgun. We got two ammo. This one fights and doesn't give us any bonus to the fight, but the attack deals plus one damage to a maximum of I think six, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and a minimum of one for each point we succeed by. So, if you got a lot of stuff, you can you could do a lot of damage with this card really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, succeeding by six is kind of a big ask, but you know, you might be able to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Just blast a gug in the face. Yeah. Yeah, right? It just goes down like a chump. Yep. Uh, we got breaking and entering. This one is investigate. Add your foot value to your skill value for this investigation. If you succeed by two or more, you can automatically evade an enemy at this location. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Hey, it's trash. Uh, also, if uh, you're careful, it's just entering. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah this is this one <clears throat> i like it this is just the newest one in that in the that cycle of events that uh, i was talking about where you get to add one of your skill values to another mm -hmm. and then if you pass by enough you get to do something else for free as well yeah yeah is it actually a cycle is there like uh, a real like, of, or is it just like, just like there's a there's a fight and an evade one right now okay and an investigate one because that's the one I'm looking at right now, like literally looking at. Um, all right. We've I can got, do the uh, last the two. <laughs> sure, sure. Got the Mauser C96. This one comes in with five ammo. We exhaust it and spend one ammo to fight. We get plus one fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. If the attack succeeds, succeeds by two or more, we can choose to either ready the Mauser to shoot again or gain a resource. So we just get extra payoff for passing our test if we pass it good enough. And the Mauser C96 upgraded, costs one less to play, and has the same amount of ammo. We exhaust it and spend one ammo to fight. We get plus two to our punch score and deal plus one damage for the attack. If you succeed by two or more, then you may then you may either ready it or gain a resource. If you succeed by four or more, you do both. I like to imagine them in their design file. They're like just the question mark four yeah. succeed by and then like in the future it'll be <laughs> succeed by five and then it's just like they keep going uh there is a succeed by five card in the game that is, might be in this list probably i think i know exactly which one it is yeah yeah <laughs> uh, we got nimble which is a great way to get some free moves out of an evade action it's basically like a elusive you had to test for but essentially you commit it for one foot and then for each point you succeed by to a maximum of three you may immediately move to a connecting location uh the card's cute i think it can be really well in uh, especially in something like solo uh for the archetype and your foot's going to be high in green anyway there's a lot of power there mm -hmm. level three backstab from the uh winifred deck you get a fight using your fist, your foot instead of your fist. This attack deals plus two damage. If you succeed by two or more, return backstab to your hand at the end of your turn. This is another one of those things, exactly as Bruno's saying. You play the event, you succeed by two or more, it returns back to your hand. The value just does not go away unless you biff it. So my advice is don't freaking biff it. Yeah. Oh, Travis, yeah. you can talk about Lucky Cigarette Case. Yeah, I like drawing cards. Um, so this one is, uh, takes a pure accessory slot, which is, has, like, light competition in, uh, rogues, but this is probably the one that you want. Like, you don't look for a reason to play Lucky Cigarette Case, you look for a reason not to. And there are reasons not to, like her slicer dreams, but not for this archetype. So <laughs> after you succeed a test by two or more, you get to exhaust it and draw a card. And the upgraded version costs three experience, commits for an extra brain... And after succeed by skill test by one or more, you get to exhaust a cigarette case. Look at the top X cards, 
of your deck for a card, draw it, and then shuffle the remaining cards in your deck. So where X is the amount you succeeded by. Um, this is another one of those quality of life upgrades. Mm -hmm. Where, like, if you got the experience laying around to upgrade, that's nice, but the level 0 version will serve you very, very well. Thank you. Um, it's expensive especially important to have this kind of card draw engine in the Succeed by X deck because you're going to end up committing a lot of cards or spending cards to generate resources for your stat pumping skills to get to that point where you can confidently pass the test by the amount that you need to. Heck yeah. And being able to have a constant way to refill that resource is nice. Uh, quick thinking is if the skill test is successful after committing for a while by two or more after resolves you may take an action immediately as if it were your turn and this action does not count towards the number of actions you can take each turn. Uh, this is just a fun way to get more actions out of uh, your turn and like opportunist this is just like enabling you to succeed by two easier however it does not come back into your hand when you are successful like opportunist but cool, getting an man. action out of it is still very nice. Could you imagine if it did? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, if you're not playing Taboo as well, um, which we recommend you don't, but like this is one of those cards where it's not a huge deal, um, but like when it does come up, it's kind of broken. So like you could, kid, as printed, you can commit two of these to the same test, and you need to succeed by two or more, and look at that. Two of them gives you two symbols. Amazing. So once again, you just need to pass the test, and if you do, you get two actions. Sick. Whereas the Taboo version limits you to one copy of Quick Thinking per test, which is not too hard to remember and again it doesn't come up come up that often yeah it's completely fair though yeah no it's a uh, hard it's one of those taboo lists where i'd be like hey you know new players can handle this yeah like rex or dr milan but uh travis why don't you take pickpocketing uh, this version of pickpocketing is uh the experienced version because the previous one doesn't care about how much you succeed by this one is level two um costs two to play and commits for two foot symbols. It's fast. You don't need to spend action play, which is always great. Uh, the relevant part, though, is when you evade an enemy, you get to exhaust pickpocketing to either draw a card or gain one resource. But if you succeed by two or more, you do both instead. The law of the investigators who are strong on this archetype. Um, as a general rule, you want to have an investigator who has like a five in the stat or, or can easily get to a five. Um, which means that Winifred and Tony and uh, Finn are very high containers for this archetype, as well as Skids to a lesser extent. Um, Skids and Finn only have fours in their foot stat um, and four in a punch stat for for Skids, but uh, foot stat is, relatively, is cheaper to get points for, or easier to get points for than the fist or the book stats or the brain stats god forbid you're trying to pump your brain in green but um hmm. yeah it's just a really if you can consistently make the evasion checks this is an incredible resource engine uh this card is like the biggest reason like because of this card you're going to be looking at evasion and foot matters as complementary archetypes to this one um single-handedly just because of how strong it's, it's just you can do something you were already wanted to do and you get a free card and free resource for it. Just great. Uh, as a side note, Change I... Change slide, Jeff. Pardon? Change slide? Oh, yeah, no, no. I was just, uh, I was just like, having my brain, the gears click about quick thinking and Silas. If it takes back to your hand, does the still see the card text? And yes, it does. So that made me pretty excited. Well, so. this is a different video, but I don't think Silas <laughs> should get the back if you pull them back. I agree. It's in, uh, unintuitive, but we'll get there later. Bryn, I think this is the card, right? Yeah, this is this is the sixteen the by one. five card. I'll let you take I it. I love then. this card. Yeah, it's one of the few rogue cards. I'm like, yeah. Well, then Travis, you could talk about it again. Oh, okay. Uh, this <laughs> card draws you cards. I like that. Uh, all in costs five experience, which is a lot, and commits for two wild symbols. Max one committed for test, and if this test is successful. You need to draw a card for every point you succeeded by to a maximum of five. So you get to, if you're playing the archetype right, you commit this and you draw five cards. And then you get to shuffle back all the weaknesses that you drew without resolving them. Wow. It's actually, like, incredible. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it feels so good. You're just doing something you're doing anyway. And you're like, yeah, I'll take five cards. Why wouldn't I? 
Hell yeah. Yeah, and if you've got a cigarette case, you get to draw six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is like less, it's not a huge difference from drawing six. But, <laughs> but it still like, feels good. You know. Well, yeah, which means at the end of your turn you get to discard an extra card, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah no, if, you, if you run this at, at the first test on your turn, you succeed by a whole bunch. You've also now got the resources to succeed every other test you're going to make this turn mm-hmm. by that much. Yeah, no, it's, it's an incredible card. Sick. Uh, let's get to uh, this archetype synergizes with skill cards. Oh, spelling error? God dang it. Why doesn't Photoshop have spell check? All right. Skill cards that boost your relevant stat will, with one L, ensure you have a better chance of succeeding by X. So yeah, skill cards are going to be kind of like the lifeblood to... Because like every card, most cards in the game have symbols on them, but skill cards are there to be committed to skill tests. So they're the ones you're going to want in your deck to get the benefit from them. Most notably, something like Opportunist. It's a skill card that also helps you get your archetype like synergizing and going well. And this will kind of transfer over to the majority of the skill cards in the game. Uh, investigators who specialize in a stat. If the stat you are making the most tests with is relatively high, it's a lot more likely for you to succeed by X. See Finn Edwards evading, Winnie uh, in the deck we're going to be talking about. a number thing where five is greater than three. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Rogue Agility Matters. It was the hardest thing for me in the world to type that and not just type Foot Matters, but I did get my foot in there anyway. <laughs> if you want your Probably. foot to be high, you'll likely succeed by X. Pretty simple. Yeah, if you're already playing cards that care about having an, like, an astronomically high foot score, like, you might as well just like get bonuses off of having a high stat already. And I, I also have bad news for anybody who doesn't like that we refer to the symbols by foot, fist, brain, and book. Like, we're not changing. I'm sorry. It's No, it's it, at the end of the day, it's Fantasy, Fantasy Flight's fault for changing the, like, actual names of them between Eldritch Horror and yeah. the card game. Yeah. I also, foot is one syllable. It's so much easier to say than agility. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Flight, All right. Or fist and combat. Yeah. Brain and willpower. It I turns would, out we're I actually... I like will. Played. I think will's fine. I, I like that one, but... Brain, it's all yeah, like brain actually, kind of like will a little bit more than brain because uh, there's like a slight we call it brain damage. There's like yeah. a slight overlap. Yeah, there. there is a little bit of a little bit of dissonance there. Mm-hmm. But you'll ne- nothing will ever be booked than me because I just imagine this person having a hundred books and being like, "I'm so good at finding clues. I have so many books." <laughs> well, they know so much. They've read a hundred books. Exactly, Travis. Why don't you give a quick rundown on this Winifred deck of its final experience form for the Succeed by X archetype? Yeah, this one's uh, 29 experience. Again, these are all trying to be like between 25 to 35, so like reasonably attainable by the end of the scenario. But they're also kind of kitted out with all the realistic bells and whistles you want. Um, <clears throat> this is just like a generalist build where you just do things and then you do them a little bit better than you need to. Um, Nothing real special here. We got the lock picks for investigating, Mauser for killing stuff, lucky cigarette case to fuel everything. High rollers, a nice little bump for all your skills. Pickpocketing again, making use of that five foot to keep the resources flowing. You handle this. This one is mostly there to just offshore that awful one brain score for like the really crushing cards that you draw. Single copy of Backstab and Pill for a nice because they're just like kind of supplements to the lock picks and the Mauser. Where you don't, you don't really need two copies of them because you're gonna get to play them two to three times before you discard them. But at the same time, you're not gonna have enough resources to play them more than two or three times. Mm-hmm. So, Daring Maneuver is just a nice. It recycles itself, uh, ensures that it pushes you mm-hmm. over the hump for one of the tests that maybe you hit the minus five on. Easy Mark is in a lot of these green decks you're gonna see because it's actually an incredibly easy uh, and efficient economy card. Two copies of have watched this because it relies hey, on you succeeding. Hey Travis. You <laughs> desperately need. Dude, one day um, I'm gonna say, hey Travis, watch this. Run off camera, jump off my freaking table, go through this window, <laughs> and then that'll be the end of the series. Like that's it. J- Justin, are you okay? <laughs> I won't make it. <laughs> <laughs> you no. Know, um, yeah, and then just like a big pile of skills, we got the momentums we discussed earlier, and the 
the opportunist and quick thinking. So I expect Courage and Alex to you're just there to bump up your stats because mm -hmm. those are the stats you're going to be using a lot of the times. Winifred in particular benefits from those playing a big pile of skills because she, as long as, if you're committing one, the second skill you commit is like kind of free. Mm -hmm. Right? As many of the yeah. dexterities could also be the upgraded versions if you have a little bit more experience laying around. Yeah. But the same with the lucky cigarette cases. You could bump those up to the next level if you are really rich in yeah. experience. Yeah, if, if I had that much experience just sitting around, though, I would probably look at playing all in in my deck instead. Uh, or if you're a truly daring uh, so. aviatrice and you, or whatever her name is, your title is, and you're playing Charon Zobel, I try to avoid those experience modifiers for these decks, but you can play Charon Zobel and just, like, have an extra 16 experience or whatever. <laughs> 14 experience, I guess, but... Yeah. Sick? Yeah, this is, like, nothing fancy, but it, it's the kind of... I just, just thought, what kind of deck would I build if I was building away for a deck, and here we are. Yeah, no, you. Yeah. I think you killed it. I think it's great. Uh, in, in conclusion, if you want to play this archetype, buy the Winifred deck. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You'll yeah. get a lot of mileage out of that. Yeah, it'll give yeah. you everything you need to like get going. Yeah, there's There are still enough cards within the, the basic cycles to like give it a try before you commit to that if you really want them. Yeah. Yeah, but I do off, think, but... uh, with what Bruno was saying, the Winifred deck kind of injected some energy into this archetype, especially with those return the events to your hand cards. Those are really nice. Yeah, there's a lot of payoffs for it. Here. Exactly, yeah. All right, yeah. Uh, as, you can, as always, you can check down below for the deck list and like and subscribe for more archetype guides. And then let me know what archetype you want to see next. Uh, we're going to be doing Survivor next week. And I haven't decided which one yet, so let me know what survivor archetype you want to see and why is it Dark Horse? <laughs>